going to come to you in prayer, Lord, and, and ask that you keep your arms of protection around them, Father. Lord, we ask that right now that you would just bless that family in Charlotte, Lord, and that wife that witnessed her, her husband's life being snuffed out right in front of her. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we know that all power is in your hand, Father, and there's nothing that can be done in this world without you being there. Lord, we ask right now, Father, that you stop this attack by the police on black men in America everywhere, Lord. We ask that you touch their hearts, minds, bodies, and souls and open them up, Father, and give them a sense of caring and love. And, Father, to not just go out and just do us black men any kind of way, Lord. We ask that you protect us and guide us and love us, Father. And let us not be foolish in our dealings when we deal with them, Lord. Let us be mindful to treat them as you have taught us to treat each other. All these blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, if you have your Bibles, would you open to book to Luke 16, 19 through 31. We're going to touch on this a little bit this morning. That's Luke 16, verse 19 through 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man died and was buried in Hades where he is in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father, Abraham, have pity on me. And send Lazarus to dip the tip of his fingers in water and cool my tongue because I'm in ag agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you receive your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is in comfort here and you are. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be, they will not be convinced even if someone raised from the dead in agony. And besides all this, between us, you have a great charming has been set in place so that those who went who want to go here here to you cannot nor can anyone cross over from there to us he answered then the beggar said father send Lazarus to my family for i have five brothers let him warn them so they will not also come to this place of torment abraham replied they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said. But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. The sermon today. Things everyone should know about hell. Amen? Introduction. Set off a smoke alarm using the test button. The sound you just heard is very unpleasing. It is loud, it is annoying, and you probably would rather not hear it. Nevertheless, this noise could save your life because it comes from a smoke alarm, which is intended to make a clear warning of impending dangers so that you will take actions to save your life. 
Today, I will speak to you about hell. It is unpleasing and disturbing to hear. It is like the smoke alarm in that we would rather not hear about it. But the teachings Jesus give us about hell is intended to warn us of the impending dangers so that we will take actions and be saved for the eternal life. I hope each of you will listen carefully as I share from the Bible things everyone should know about hell. Amen? As most of you are aware, we are currently in the book of Luke. Last week, I taught on Luke 16, 1 through 13, which concerns the wise, the wise use of money. Today, I am teaching on Luke 16, 19 through 31. In this text, I will see things everyone needs to know about here. I would say things that everyone needs to know about hell. The first thing everyone should know about hell is that hell may be in your future. Even if you are presently profiting. At this point in the narrative, Jesus is not speaking primarily to his true disciples. Rather, he is speaking primarily to those who was outwardly religious but not truly repentant for their sins or trust in the commitment of Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, this story is recorded in the Bible for genuine Christians to learn from even though they are not in danger of hell. Amen? Now, there's a debate among Bible scholars as whether this story is a parable, which is an illustration, fictional story, or uh, is this story a non-fictional event? The good argument, there's good arguments on both sides of the debate, but it is one that I do not want to take sides on because both parables Historical events recorded in the Bible are intended to do some things which teach which which is teach us spiritual truths. The first spiritual truth we learn is that hell may be in your future if you are presently prospering. In these verses, Jesus especially note that the man who ended up in hell was living a good life. He was wealthy, living in luxury, eating the best foods. According to Jesus, this went on every day. There was nothing in his life on earth that indicated the traumatic future of that he faced. That in customs, the rich man would have been considered blessed spiritually and and destined and destined for the heavens. The people at that time reasoned that if a person was doing all right in life, there was no reason to worry about the future life. After all, if God was angry with them, he would not profit them. People tend to think that way today. People think that if judging, judgment has not come already, it will not come in the future. Let me give you an example of that type of thinking. Today, you may be healthy, prosperous, and successful, but that doesn't mean everything is okay with God. You may live in a two-story house, go on extravagant vacations around the world, but your final trip may still be to hell. You can be a member of the church, a deacon, elder, or even a pastor, and still go to hell. Your present status is no indication of your future destiny. 
question. Why did the rich man end up in hell? Was it just because he was rich? No. Abraham was rich, yet he is in heaven. Then why did the rich man end up in hell? The next couple of verses will give you some insight into the answers to that question. The rich man was in hell because he was not right with God. Even though he was religious, and we knew that because he addressed Abraham as Father Abraham, and because of his family was familiar with the scriptures according to verse 29. He still was not in a right relationship with God. We know he was not right with God because of the way he treated poor Lazarus. The rich man ignored the hungry and the hunger and hurt of Lazarus, even though he was aware and able to meet his his needs easily. Nobody who is right with God would be so unloving toward their neighbors. In a surprise twist, the poor beggar who would who had been considered crude by God is carried to Abraham's side, which is a way of saying that he went to heaven. Once again, earthly status has nothing to do with eternal destiny. He may have suffered many trials and hurts in his life, but there was no indication of God's judgment as many thought. The main emphasis of this story is on the rich man who ended up in hell. And from that we learn the first thing everyone should know about hell. Amen. As I conclude. <laughs> uh, um, no. Um, this is that it may be in your future even as you are presently prospering. Mm. Now, let's go on to the next few verses where we learn the second thing everyone should know about hell. The second thing everyone needs to know is that hell is a place of eternal torment and agony. It is a popular conception of Jesus, one who never offered Offended or dis disturbed us with troubling things like the unending and real torment of hell. Even in church, many pastors try to tone down what Jesus said so clearly about the agonies of hell. Because such teachings are not good for the bottom line, which is filling the pews and the offering plates. We, despite our decisions for less troub troubling Jesus, he that says some very disturbing things about hell. If you were to take Jesus seriously, we must also take seriously what he says about hell. I want you to notice how hell is described so vaguely in this story. Verse 23 states, The rich man... Is said to be in torment. In verse 24, he begged for even a small amount of water to relieve his suffering. He himself said in verse 24, I am in agony in this fire. In verse 25, Abraham uses the word agony to describe the man's condition in hell. In verse 27 and 28, the rich man begs to warn his family about this place so that they would not come to this place of torment. The words torment and, and agony are used repeatedly by Jesus in this story. Clearly, there's a point to this. Jesus wants everyone to know the real truth about the sufferings of hell. This is... The, 
the meaning to be wait a minute, excuse me. This is the meaning to be disturbing so that we will do everything necessary to avoid hell. Hell is a place of eternal torment and agony. This is not the only place where the Bible uses such frightening language to describe hell. In Matthew 25, 30, Jesus described hell as a place of outer darkness where there is weeping and gritting of teeth. He also described in the Bible a place where the wound does not die and the fire is never quenched. In the book of Revelations, the final judgment is described as the lake of fire. In other places of scripture, Jesus said it would be better to have a milestone hung around your neck and thrown into the sea that to go into the unquenchable fire. Mark 9.43. Here's the point. Even describing, every describing of hell that we have is one of suffering, torment, and agony. Some people have the image of hell as being a based on reality. Hell is a place of eternal torment and agony. Abraham words in verse 25 read, Do not interfere with the rich man is being punished in hell and the poor man is being blessed in heaven because of their financial status in life. The point Abraham is making is to remind the rich man of how he did not use his good things, wealth, to help the needy of whom he was aware. In other words, Abraham is reminding him that he can expect no relief from hell because he was being punished for his own sins. Amen? In conclusion. <laughs> People do not listen to the Bible. We will not respond to the supernatural signs. Why it is true that those verses teach that God will not give people supernatural signs and wonders to get them to repent. This verse also teaches that a person can avoid hell if they do listen, keep to God's words, and repent. What does it mean to listen to God's word? What does God's word say to do? The Bible tells us to trust in and commit to follow Jesus Christ. Those who do this may still struggle with sin, but when they die, they will enter the joy of heaven forever instead of experience the agony of hell forever. So be like the noise of the smoke detector. Knowledge of hell can save your life. The choice is yours. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we'd like to open up the doors of the church. Ask that if anybody uh, 